So I need to see the red and green dot. So then see it's going to pass several services. You know what? I had a prayer letter here that I meant to read. I didn't have it written down, but I had it sitting on the pulpit here. And we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll forego that today. Uh, go back there and read this from Brother Danny Jack. He's talking about um, things that happened to him with his spell that he had had uh, back in the seizure, uh, the seizure back in December. Uh, he's feeling better. It was an isolated incident. Um, he's also on the road a lot. You can, you can look at that back there. And the Lord's really filling up his schedule. So I praise the Lord. Uh, for that. That's what we're praying for is that God fill up his schedule and they don't have to worry about raising any more support. They can, they can supplement it, supplement it with meetings and, uh, wouldn't that be a blessing? All right. Uh, I'll put that up this evening after service. Let's get into the Bible though. Colossians chapter number three. When you found your place there, let's go ahead and stand all who can and will this evening as we'll stand for the reading of God's word. Colossians chapter number three. Verse number 18 through 25 is where we've been uh, looking. Just as a kickoff point, I want to get back into the study uh, this evening. So I'm going to read the entirety of the text because it's been a little while since we've been here. Uh, just so that we can uh, get our minds wrapped back around where we were. Colossians chapter 3 and verse number 18, the Bible said, Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Here's where we've been taking our thought from, where the, the this whole thought uh, stemmed from several weeks ago. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. You can be seated this evening. Thank you for standing. We've now seen multiple, had multiple messages. I think this will be the fourth message um, with this thought in mind. The thought this evening coming from verse 23, and whatsoever you do, do it heartily uh, as to the Lord. We talked about that word heartily. The word heartily means exceedingly abundantly above, right? So what we need to make sure that we're doing in 2024, in this new year that, that the Lord has given us, it is a blessing to know that we were able to see another year. Amen. We were able to see another year to get to 2024. And, uh, and, and today it's, it's no small feat, brother Matt, to make it another year in life. But what I want to make sure that in my life, in your life, in Hope Bible Baptist Church's life, I want to make sure that we're doing more. We're doing more in 2024. That we do more for the Lord. We do more that honors the Lord. We do more for those folks that, that we're coming in contact with. So we'll be moving um, not, not extremely fast. So we're going to kind of, as you've seen, the past three services, I think last time we only made it through like two points. I think the time before that we only made it through a couple of points and, uh, which is, which is great. I want to make sure that we really knock it out of gear so that we all get a hold of this. All right. So this is, this is, this is different for me. All right. Cause typically I try to give you everything I got and then I have something new for you next week. And so, but now I want to really just make sure that we're getting a hold of this as we run into this new year. Okay. And we may be saying more in 24 in June. I don't know. I don't know where this thing is going to go, but we're going to, we're going to keep after it. And I guess I'll end up having to change the name of the title. Just keep the series the same, I reckon. Uh, but no, let's, uh, let's go Lord in prayer. Let's ask him to meet with us this evening, have his will, his way in the service. And as I told you, I had three points. I think I might have got done with one point. But throughout those three points, we added over 20 sub points. Since then, Brother Mike Brown has grown. All right. So there, there's all kinds of new things that the Lord's been showing me through, uh, just praying about this, preaching through it and, and different things of that nature. So let's ask the Lord to meet with us and uh, help us in this service night and that we can give more in 2024. All right. Brother Peter Taylor, how about you pray for us before we preach? Thank you again. 
Amen. We began talking, uh, I guess it's been uh, some time, but I guess it was last Sunday morning that uh, we, we started talking about making goals, making goals for the new year. We always make goals, whether they be uh, physical goals, business goals, financial goals. We, we make all kinds of family goals, relational goals. And uh, we make spiritual goals, do we not? We always make spiritual goals. And, um, you know, each year we tend to get the first quarter of the year behind us and we're like, man, I have failed in my spiritual goals. They never, not all of them, not all of them, but most of them, a lot of them anyway, we, we fail in our spiritual goals. And so what do we do? We rededicate ourselves <laughs> to our goals for the year, right? And so in doing so, we tend to a lot of times they'll drop off again, Brother Swope. And, and so we've got to continue to do that, continue to re-up those. And, and that, that's that's good. The, the problem that we run into, though, a lot of times, Miss Cat, is that whenever uh, we allow them to, 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 to fall down a little bit, we end up leaving them there for far too long, right? I, instead of going and getting right back in. Um, I'm, I'm asking this question, and I'm not looking for an answer, but I want you to ask yourself this. Uh, we're two weeks in, right? Yeah, two weeks today. Two weeks into the new year. Have you been able to keep up your spiritual goals thus far? And uh, I want you to think about that. And uh, most of us may have missed a day. Many of us may have missed a day or at least cut some time short because life happens. I get it. I understand. Life happens. But But with that being said, Brother Matt, when life happens, why is it that Jesus always takes the back seat? Why is it, why is it that our relationship with, with the Lord is always the one that suffers? And, uh, it, it, it does, it does in my life anyway. It may not be for you, but it does in my life. It seems like if I oversleep and I've got to get to work, my job, I don't go late to. Amen. I cut my time short with the Lord. If I, if I do something like that, I was reading something, uh, the other day that somebody had, uh, somebody had said, um, is a lady who, who got convicted about how much exercise she was doing. She has lost a ton of weight. She has done real well and uh, she's doing great. But she says she gets up early in the morning. She would always get up early in the morning and had no problem waking up early and going straight to exercising. No problem doing that. It made her feel better, made her look better. Let's be honest, that's what we all want, right? It made her happier. But she wasn't spending time with the Lord. So she is convicted. If I can get up and I can exercise before I go get my life started, why can't I wake up 15 minutes earlier than what I was doing exercising and get into my Bible for 15 minutes? You say, 15 minutes? What's that going? It's better than what she was doing. Amen. Better than what some of us do. Amen. So then she got in the routine of doing that. And understand, when I say routine, I'm not, I'm not meaning a routine like just a whole hum drum, but your body gets into a routine. You get used to things and that's where you, you need to stick with it. So then she said, now I'm getting up. Now, then I went to getting up 15 minutes earlier than that. So now I'm 30 minutes earlier than what I used to. So I can still exercise at the same time. But now I've got prayer time and Bible reading time. Right? Now what happens though, and she didn't say, nor would I ask, what happens when she doesn't get up that 15 minutes earlier? What suffers? What happens when she don't get that 30 minutes early? What happens if it's only 15 minutes a day? Does prayer suffer? Does devotion suffer? Or does my bodily exercise suffer? Think about that. Think about it. We have routines that we are in. Amen. We have routines. I get it. Peter Taylor's going to get up out of bed about 3 o'clock every morning, whether he wants to or not. It's going to happen. Suzanne says, get out of here so I can sleep. Amen. No, but that's, that's, we've got routines. We're going, to, we're going to follow those routines. Our body gets used to things, and we're going to do those. Why does, why does God always suffer? In those things. We talked about a few things that we always talk about. I want to do more. I want to do more. And uh, we, we talked about giving more of me for him, right? I want to give more of me uh, for him. So that means I want to study more. I want to read more. Remember we talked about those things? I want to study more and, and, and read more. And then we always use this one, don't we? Anybody ever write this one down? I want to pray more. That don't feed the bulldog, does it, Brother Mike? I like that saying. You can say it all you want to, but that don't feed the bulldog. Right? I want to pray more. I do. I want to pray more. But do we? 
Because I promise you this this evening, what we want to do gets done. Amen. Now, I ain't super spiritual right there, but that is the truth. What we want to do gets done. So I want to pray more. I want to witness more. We talked about that uh, last week. I want to rejoice more. And, and we should, we should, uh, we should strive to rejoice more. And, uh, anybody remember your first, uh, your Bible memorization? First Thessalonians 5.16? Rejoice evermore, right? Rejoice evermore. When life starts hitting you between the eyes, as it probably already has in the first 14 days of 2024. Brother Michael Swope, we need to rejoice evermore. Brother Tom, why would we not be excited about serving God? Why would we not be excited that we, we get to read our Bible? We need to rejoice evermore. Then we began talking yes, uh, uh, Wednesday night, I believe it was. We started talking about, will we worship more? Will we worship more? I want to worship Him as a congregation. I want to worship Him as an individual. I want to worship Him in my own private time with Him. Then we talked about, will we give more? And that's where just the whole service went off the rails. <laughs> Talking about giving more. No, it's just, I'm just kidding. It was a good service. Real good service, actually. But we give, will we give more? We always go to money. And, and that is a necessity. And God does command it. That is, you know, that, that is part of it. But will we give more financially to the work of the Lord that people get saved? Buildings can be built. Tracks can be printed and things can be done. Can, can we give more that people can go into other countries and, and, and start churches and build churches and see folks get saved? You know, we may never walk on the ground of a foreign country that we get to help and support someone but but we still get the we still get the credit for helping them get there. Amen. We still get the attaboy from the Lord for those things. So financially will we give more this year? We give more time. Time is more precious than money. Anybody that's getting on up there in age, we understand that. Time is a whole lot more important than money. Will we give of our time? For the Lord, will we give our time to see folks uh, come to Christ? Then we talked about: Will we give more of ourself up? We give more of ourself up, and uh, so the Bible talks about a cheerful giver. We should be a cheerful giver because God loveth the cheerful giver, right? That's financially time self. God loveth the cheerful giver, but He hateth the tightwad. Amen. I think that's inspired, Brother Mike. I think it is. I really do. Now, you ain't going to find that in your King James, but I do feel like that's inspired. All right? So let's get here into the uh, the new uh, new information for this evening. So we have seen more of me for him. Next, uh, I, I want to look and at, 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 I want to pray to be more like Jesus for others. I want to be more like Jesus for others. Look with me in 1 John chapter number 2. 1 John chapter number 2. Again, we'll be moving around the Scriptures a little bit this evening. First John chapter number 2 and verse number 1 is where we'll be. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation of our sins, and not of ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do note that we know him if we keep his commandments he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Now, did y'all see verse number four right there? That's not pastor. That's God. Amen? That's not mean old pastor standing up here calling you a liar. That's, that's the Bible. Amen? Look at verse five. But whoso keepeth his word in him, verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby, we know, or rather, know we that we are in Him. He that saith he abideth in Him ought himself also to also so to walk, even as He walked. In order for us to say that we abide in Him, 
then we must walk as he did. Pretty simple, right? Now what y'all got from that scripture? We must walk as he did. I want to take a few minutes to look at the topic of being more like him for this coming year. Being more like him. First thing I think that we need to be more like Jesus is found in Hebrews chapter number 8. Let's go there. Let's go to Hebrews chapter number 8. And um, I, I, I want to give you give you a little warning. This one's not fun. <laughs> All right? This one's not fun. And uh, this is something that none of us enjoy doing. But it's necessary. All right? I want to be more like my Lord. I don't know that we'll get past this point tonight, Brother Mike Brown, but we're going to try. Amen? All right, are y'all with me? Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 12, look this way. Everybody do this. Let's take a deep breath. Let's get ready to <laughs> nuzzle in here a little bit. It's not that serious. I'm just joking with you. It's not that bad. All right. Depends on how you're living. For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. You know what I need to learn to do more of? I need to learn to... I need to learn to forgive. I need to learn to forgive more. You know what everybody sitting in this room needs to learn to do? Forgive more. Amen. I told y'all this one wasn't going to feel real good. It didn't feel good for me when I got it started. But hey, listen. The truth of the matter is, if there's something I need to do more of in 2024, Brother Mike Brown, it's forgive. Can I testify for a minute? I like to think of myself as a pretty easygoing guy. Don't bite your lip. Look over at my son, he's like, you're going to show him how uneasy going on. No, I'm just kidding. I like to think of myself as being able to get along with about anybody. Yeah, I do. I feel like I'm pretty laid back and, you know, I can get along with about anybody. But the problem I have sometimes, Brother Matt, is I don't. <laughs> I feel like I can, but I don't all the time, Brother Peter. And, you know, when things go uh, a different way than what I think, I get a little perturbed about it. And then I really, Brother Tom, I really get to the point that whenever I see things not going the way God designed it, then I really start getting upset. Amen. And I've got to learn to forgive more. I've got to learn to let God have control of it. Where would any of us be today without forgiveness of the Lord? Amen. Where would we be? We all know the account of Peter asking in, in Matthew chapter 18, right? Matthew 18, 21 and 22. How many times should I forgive a brother when he trespasses against me, Lord? Seven times he thought he was being spiritual. I'm being real spiritual here. I'll forgive him. He trespassed. Can you do something wrong with me seven times? I'll forgive you. That ain't what he said. No, seven times 70. Seven times. Listen, I've been done wrong a lot. Brother Reg, I've been done wrong a lot. But never have I been done 490 times that I can keep count of by somebody. Right? But I'm to forgive that many times. So, Miss Suzanne, whenever I've been done wrong, and I start getting, oh, you're at 300. You keep coming, buddy. You keep doing me wrong. <laughs> did, I ever, did I ever forgive for one through 299? I don't believe I ever did, right? And uh, but how many times have we thought that, Lord? I know I'm supposed to get seven times seventy, but you know this this cat's really pushing my buttons. But we do. We need to forgive more, and uh, because the Lord is rich in mercy, and mm, as a child of God, so should we be as well. Are we not supposed to emblem the Lord? We're, we're supposed to resemble Him, are we not? We're supposed to, that's why they call us Christians. We're supposed to be little Christ, right? And uh, that's a tall order. I get it. That's a very tall order for us to do. But if he is rich in mercy, then so should we be rich in mercy. Go to Galatians chapter 5. I know y'all been here for some time, so I'm not going to belabor here much that I know of right now. We may circle back around to it later on. I know y'all have been in Galatians 5.22 in Sunday school. Brother Peter, if I'm not mistaken, had done some fruits of the Spirit. 
Still there? Yeah. And uh, so been working on some things there <clears throat> and, and, and been teaching a lot on that. And I know I, I've done, matter of fact, my very first uh, series here was on the fruits of the spirit whenever I come past you here a little over four years ago. So I'm not going to belabor here as we've been here before and you're still there. So I'm definitely not trying to steal any of Brother Peter's thunder here. He'll probably tell you every bit of what I'm going to tell you if he hasn't already. But Galatians 5.22 but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk. In the spirit. Like I said, I could spend time breaking down each of these, uh, but we have in the past and Brother Peter's there now, so I'm not going to do that. What I will say about these is that each one is needed more of in 2024. Each one is needed more of in our life in order for us to be more like Jesus. Amen. What is these? Are we supposed to live in the spirit? Amen, we are. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. Live if, but the Bible says, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. When you, when you pray and ask God for more of these nine uh, fruits of the Spirit, let me ask you a question. How does fruit grow? Now, this isn't, this isn't an arborous question. This isn't anything, but I mean, this is just common sense. Does fruit grow when it's on the ground after it's been fallen off the tree? It has to be attached to the vine. It has to be attached to a source, a food source, whether it be a tree, whether it be a vine, whether it be a limb, a branch, whatever it may be, it has to be connected. It grows when it's connected to divine go to john chapter number 15 let's take a look here at what the bible says but we want to make sure if if, if i want if i want to grow in love if i want to grow in joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance if i want to grow in any of those nine they're fruits so therefore i have to be plugged in i have to be connected to the vine john 15 verse number one you can see why we came here. Jesus says, I am the true vine. And my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now you're clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in who? Unless we abide in Christ, right? I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth, I love this word, much fruit. For without me, he can do nothing. Do we want love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness? Meekness, do we want all those things? Do we want all those things to grow in our lives? Of course we do. It's going to take us abiding in the vine. It's going to take us not only being in the spirit, living in the spirit, but walking in the spirit as well. We will not bear the fruits of the spirit unless we are tapped in. And Brother Mike Brown, the beauty of being tapped in, he said, if you are, you will produce much fruit. Not just a little bit, but much fruit. See, I want my love to grow. Not only for him, Brother Peter, I want my love to grow for you, for everybody in here. I want my love to grow for my wife. I want my love to grow for my children. Amen. I want my love to grow for your children, your grandbabies. Amen. You say, Pastor, you're supposed to love them. And I do, but I want it to grow that much the more. I want, to, I want to be burdened for them the way you are on a daily basis. I do. You say, well, you should be. You're my pastor. Yeah, I am. And that's why I desire these things. 
I want to pray as fervently for your babies as you pray for your babies. Amen. Why? Because if they've got two praying for them, then you get me on top of it, and then somebody else get a hold of that, get to love them. Now I'm going to tell you, we'll ring the bells of heaven. Amen. So the fruit of the Spirit, unless we're tapped in to the true vine, they won't grow. Why would we not want, listen, let me just, these first three, why would we not want more love, joy, and peace? I mean, think about that. Don't we want to love more? Joy. I got joy. Don't we, don't we want more joy? You can't hardly say joy without smiling a little bit. And if you have a trouble with it, just remember that little deal I just did right there. That'll make you crack up anyway. Amen. <laughs> Love, joy. And you have to be crippled too high for crutches if you don't want peace. Amen. I'm thankful that we can pray for love, joy, and peace. And if we're tapped in, Brother Matt, to the right vine, oh, we can have much fruit, as John 15, 5 says. Is there anyone that is just absolutely against being more long-suffering? Anybody that just does not want to be more gentle? How about goodness? Are we against being good, having goodness in our life protruding from us. Are we against that? Of course not. We all want that. Listen, I want to learn to be more long-suffering. Amen. It's okay to say amen. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I understand I need to be more long-suffering. Amen. I need to be more gentle. Sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I find myself, Brother Matt, being more like a bull in a china shop as opposed to long-suffering and gentle with, with, with people. I know I need more faith. Mine is weak at times. How about you? I know I need more meekness and temperance. We suffer. Temperance. We could all use a little more self-control, couldn't we? Amen. Amen. I could definitely lose, use some more self-control whenever somebody brings a cake to the house. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Tom Borges and I, don't, we, we talked about that this morning, didn't we? <laughs> Ain't that funny? Yeah. I need more self-control. You'd think, oh, it's just a fork. <laughs> that thing just keeps shoveling. <laughs> but no, we do. We need, we need more self-control, right? I need more self-control. Not only in areas of, uh, of food, but I need more self-control in areas of life. I need more self-control when dealing with folks. That takes us back to long-suffering, right? I need more self-control to get my hide up out of the bed so I can get my day started with God's Word and talking to my Savior. Amen. It takes self-control to do those things. And I know I'm talking to a group of folks that are typically early risers, and I get that. And listen, if you're not an early riser, I felt like a dog for years because my pastor used to always preach that. You know, they who seek me early, they shall find me. He was always that. Yeah, that's why I get up at, before the roosters. And I was like, Lord, you're killing me because I'm sitting here barely waking up by 8, 9 o'clock, and I'm like, oh, man, you know. And he, he kept doing that, and I, 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 I finally I just told him, I said, look, man, what you don't understand is I'm praying before you are every morning. I might not be going to bed until 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm praying before you are. <laughs> so if you're a late night person, don't let that bother you. Okay? But you should still want to start your day with the Lord. Even if you don't get out of bed till noon. Now we might talk about that one. <laughs> no, just kidding. Wake up at 11.30 now. All right? Get you, get you some time. All right? No, but seriously, start your day with serving the Lord, okay? One of these fruits that I believe that we all need, and I'll, I'll hit it just real quick, and I'm not going to go through all of them. As I said, I'm not going to. But one I feel like we all need, and we alluded to at the beginning, is the very first one, and that's love. That's love. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. You say, oh, well, I love all the people I go to. How many times do you get told that you, that you are loved when you're at church? 
All the time, don't we? We're all the time shaking somebody's hand and saying, boy, I sure do love you. Man, it's good to see you. And I'm not doubting that. I'm not saying that people are just giving lip service. That's, that's not what I'm saying this evening by no stretch of the imagination. Please don't, please don't get, the, boy, I'll give somebody a complex. They'll think every time somebody comes to hug their neck, tell them I love them. Do you really? Do you really love me? Yes, they do. They do love you. But do we love in this context? Do we love like Christ loved? Understand this, if we will love like Christ did, it'll fix most of those other eight. Amen? Paul wrote back in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 13. Y'all there with me? Say amen if you are. Amen. amen. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. So between faith, hope, and charity... The greatest is charity, and we know that means love. All right, when, when studying the scripture, you understand that means love. I believe it's important going into 2024. As we're two weeks into this baby now, I believe the, one of the most important things that we can do as a body is to love one another. Remember, my pastor preached when he was here in town the one another's, right? One of them was love, love one another. All right, so we are to love each other before anything else. Love as a body. Love people where they are. Amen. How long somebody's been saved is no indication of how far down the road they are. Amen. Pastor, what do you mean by that? What I mean is you could be saved 30, 40, 50, 60 years and still be playing in a sandbox in a dirty diaper spiritually. Amen. So when I hear people say, well, you can't tell me that. I studied the Bible for 30, 40 years. Read it again. Amen. Let's read it together and let's talk about it. A lot of times you get people who say, I'm, I'm, I'm super spiritual because I've been saved this long. Listen, if you don't ever get into the book, then Brother Matt, it's not doing us any good to say that we're saved. If we're not learning anything from the book. Don't let our love be conditional. Don't let our love be, I love you so long as what you do I agree with. That's conditional love. Amen. That's conditional. See, there are things as a pastor I've had to learn. There's things that as a pastor I still got to learn. I got a long way to go. I'm going into my fifth year of this thing and I still don't know nothing. Amen? But Brother Mike, fleshly, there are times whenever I look and I think, I'm going to use Brother Mike Brown as an example. All right, I don't believe I've ever had to do this. I cannot believe that Brother Mike Brown is living that way, doing that, talking like that, acting that way. I cannot believe that he's doing that. I'm not even going to talk to him. That's stupid. But how many times do we ignore somebody because they're not doing what I would have done? Well, I told Brother Mike Brown he needed to do this, this, and this. And he decided to do that, that, and that. So, obviously, I ain't even going to talk to him. That's foolish. That's foolish. And I say that this evening because Brother Mike Brown, I don't believe, to my, I mean, you wear a halo from what I understand. That's what Miss Julie says anyway. Miss Julie says he's got a halo at the house. It just hangs off that horn on the right side most of the time. <laughs> hey, man. But no, honestly, it, 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 but how many times have we loved our brethren conditionally? I don't mean that you can't still say I love them, but how many times has something happened you didn't agree with a brother? Listen, y'all, let's not be all pious tonight. We've known each other for a long time. There are times that we don't always agree. Amen. And that's okay. You know why? We're individuals. Amen. But you know what we ought to be able to agree on? Word of God. We should always be able to agree on this. So whenever we stand against this, then now we've got a problem. 
but that still gives me zero right to shun somebody. What it ought to make me do is love them where they are. Have I always been able to do that, Brother Swope? Nope. Have I always been able to do that as a pastor? Nope. You say, oh, you should. Fire me. Actually, you can't. You didn't hire me. You can't fire me. <laughs> but honestly, tonight, let's think about it. And Brother Mike Brown, if you do something I don't agree with, you've got to answer to God for it. Not me. I can take a horse to water all day long, but I'd break my hand if I hit him in the jaw because he wasn't drinking. So who am I hurting, Miss Robin? Anybody ever hit a horse in the cheek? That thing's hard. Don't do it. But seriously, though, Brother Peter, I can say, all right, read this is what the Bible says. Right here, right here, this is what it says. This is what it says. And you say, well, Pastor, that's good. I, I see it. I ain't changing. Am I going to shun you for it? Nope. What I need to do is pray for you mm -hmm. and say, God, enlighten his eyes, but let me keep loving him where he's at. Amen. <clears throat> love will fix all those other things. Love, if I love, if I love you the way I'm supposed to love you, I'll be more long suffering with you. If I love you the way I'm supposed to love you, you'll see more goodness come out in my life. I'll be more gentle with you if I love you the way I'm supposed to love you. Fruit of the Spirit is love. One thing I had to learn to get over in love whenever I was a young Christian is that everybody's not going to serve God to the capacity that I do or that I want them to. Right. Amen. As a young Christian, <clears throat> I expected everybody to be part of serving around the house of God. I expected everybody to take their calendar at the beginning of every month to set it up and say, all right, we're not available on this day, this day, this day. I don't care if the grandparents call. We're not coming, we're not coming, we're not coming. We got something going on at church. That's the way we set up our life. That's, that's just the way it was. I learned real quick, Brother Mike Brown, everybody don't do that. I'm talking about when I was back in North Carolina. My pastor and I had to have more than one conversation of you're letting other people bother you too much. I wasn't going to them. I wasn't saying nothing to them, but it was it was truly bothering my spirit, brother Matt. It truly was. It was I it was my fault. It's not their fault. I need to love them where they were. I expected everybody to do it. Reaching the lost. Why would you not want to reach the lost? Why would you not want to be faithful to church? Why would you not want others to come to church with you? Why are you not inviting people? Why are you not why are you not desiring to have people come? Why, why, why? And then I realized. That's them. They have to give an answer to God. Now, by me saying that should not make us lazy to say, yeah, leave me alone. Quit trying to push me to do stuff. I'm your pastor. I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you. All right. That's just, that's just, that's why God called me. All right. That's just what I'm going to do. But I'm still going to love you. Whether you're here, whether you're not here, whether you serve, whether you don't serve. Whether you scrub a toilet, whether you don't scrub a toilet, whether you teach class or if you if you plow the driveway, whatever it may be, I'm going to love you. And I'm going to love you where you're at. Now, is that only my responsibility? No. It's all of us. That's all of us. On that same side, when you don't serve, you don't you aren't as faithful. You're not as, 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 as active. Don't let that shame you to where you don't want to be around nobody else either. Amen? Don't let nobody else shame you. But rather ask God, Lord, help me. Help me to have a desire to do these things. Help me, Lord, to do these things. I, I had to learn to love them where they are and who they are. Jesus said in John 15, 12, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this than a man lay down his life for his friends. 
If Jesus' command that we love one another and the Holy Ghost of God said through the pen of Paul to, that love is greater than faith and hope, then I need to work on loving more. Amen? Can you agree with that this evening? We need to... And, 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 and when we love more, Brother Matt, that makes us closer to our brethren. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because now... Let me ask you a question. If your kids did something wrong to you, if your kids wronged you, do you still love them? That's your babies. Of course you still love them. Might not like them all the time, but we love them. <clears throat> right? Then why is it when our brethren do something to us, we might not love them like we should? Are they family? How about a blood brother or sister? When we was growing up and they did something to you. They took your favorite toy. They, they held you down and slapped you around a little bit. You still loved them, didn't you? You didn't like them at the time, but you still loved them. See, love will fix all of our problems, but we're going to have to love like Christ loved. I won't get near as upset with somebody if I love them. I won't come down nearly on somebody if I love them. Again, like I said, don't, don't, don't get lazy on me and think, well, ain't nobody going to be pushing me no more. No, you should won't. I would be more fearful, Brother Mike Brown, of having an answer to God than I would of a brother being upset with me because of this, that, or the other. I'd be far more upset. <laughs> so I'm going to end on love tonight. I'm going to end there. Because I feel like it's important for me to give more of me and to give more to be like Him. The greatest thing I can do, Miss Suzanne, is love like Christ loved me. I've seen too many churches, I've seen too many Christians, seen too many people that almost get joy out of seeing a brother fall. That's pitiful. That's shameful. Did you say that? That's shameful. That is shameful, shameful. We should be lifting up a brother, not trying to put our foot in the nape of his neck. If I love them, I'm getting down in the trenches with them. Brother Peter, if you're down, I'm not standing up here on the platform and saying, yeah, let him stay down there. Look at him. Yeah, everybody step over him. But I'm not in, I'm not interested in that. What I am interested in is getting down here with you. It's hey, brother, what can I do to help you? What can I do? Brother Mike, you come down here with me. Watch your back. Come on down here with me. But that's what I'm interested in. Interested in loving more in 2024. Heads bowed, eyes closed this evening. <clears throat>